G'day, I'm James. Today let's talk about Archimedes' Law of the Lever. It's a lovely result about how things balance and I actually think it's stunning and I actually don't quite understand the proofs of it. Everything I read just like, seems to be missing something in my brain. I've got a small brain, so what I want to do today is help my small brain by actually understanding the Law of the Lever for myself and hopefully it's of interest to you. So this is actually due to Archimedes who lived 288 to 212 BCE, a great Greek scholar. I believe he lived on the island of Sicily and he wrote a number of treaties, many of which survive today. And this one, the Law of the Lever, comes from On the Equilibrium of Planes. So what's the idea? The idea is you imagine you've got a beam, a very sort of a, a beam of next to no weight. The, the weight is nominal. But suppose I did put a weight on one end, say two units of weight right there, and one unit of weight on the other side. So I've got imbalanced weights there. So the question is, where is this balance? Where do I put a balance point, the fulcrum? I guess in the middle is not going to do it. I can see that it's going to tip. My experience in the real world says actually it has to be somewhere slightly closer to the heavier mass. The question is, how much closer? Where exactly is that balance point? And what Archimedes was saying, he says, okay, here's the balance point. What you do? I've got a mass of two units and a mass of th one unit. So I've got a total of three units of mass. So to divide the beam into three equal sections. And then arrange it so the fulcrum has one section of length on one side, two sections of length on the other side, adding up to three sections of length. Voila, that's going to be the balance point. So the sides, as the, so the beam is divided into lengths of one to two, which is the same ratio of the weights, one to two. But I guess it's kind of flipped there. Beautiful. Uh, to make it a little more interesting, let's go, go do more interesting numbers. Suppose I had a mass of three units of weight sitting on a beam with five units of weight. Where do I put the balance point this time? Well, Archimedes' Law of the Lever says, OK, you've got a total of three plus five, eight units of weight. Divide the beam into eight unit sections. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that right? Yes. Eight equal sections of length. And then put the fulcrum point in three sections and five sections, closer to the heavier side. So I put three sections of length there, five sections of length there. Voila. That's the balance point. Again, the ratio is three to five. The ratio is three to five with a flip. Beautiful. In general, in general, if I have, well, let's just clean this properly. Uh, good whole numbers, uh, n units of weight and m units of weight. The idea is you put the, whoops, this got a nice pen mark, you put the beam such I've got n sections of length there, m sections of length there, and voila, that's the law of the lever. That's where it's going to balance. All right, but that's true for nice whole numbers m and n. What about not nice whole numbers? Could I do this for something really nasty? Well, Archimedes was fully aware that not every number is a whole number, not every number is a fraction, so let's go all the way to a rational number. Suppose I had, suppose I had root 2 units of weight on this side with pi units of weight. So the question is, all right, do I still divide the beam so that I have lengths in the ratio of pi to, uh, pi to root 2? The answer is yes. Here's what Archimedes was arguing. Okay, so our root 2 and pi. He was fully aware that irrational numbers can be approximated by rational numbers, by fractions. In fact, you can have the approximation to be as close as you like. So we argue this. All right, choose an approximation of the square root of 2. I'm going to choose a pretty bad one, 1 1.4. Choose an approximation of pi. I'll choose a bad one again, 3.1. Okay, but now I've got rational approximations. And I can know how to answer that one, because for example, think of this. 1.4 is really 14 tenths. 3.1 is really 31 tenths. So I've got 14 tenths of a unit of weight, 31 tenths of a unit of weight. Well, don't think of units of weight as just the whole units of weight. What if I made the units of weight tenths of a unit? I've got 14 tenths of a unit and 31 tenths of a unit. Oh, now I've got good whole numbers, 14 and 31. I know how to answer that. I'm going to be closer to this side in 14 sections of length and 31 sections of length. Beautiful. So there is an approximation to the balance point for our root 2 and pi. It's not perfect because I used pretty bad approximations. To get a better approximation, go with 1.41 and 3.14. Get a better approximation, do it again, do it again. And he managed to argue that the actual fulcrum point will indeed be settling in exactly at the root 2 to pi section of length ratio. So the general law of the lever, no matter what type of weight you have, be they whole numbers, fractions or rational numbers, is this. If I've got some weight of A, I'll, I'll, I'll write WA this time, a weight of A and some weight of B, there is going to be a balance point. It's going to be at some distance D, uh, DB on that side, DA on this side. The law of the lever says the ratio of the distances you need is actually the same as the ratio of the weights you have, but flipped. There is Archimedes' law of the lever, and it doesn't matter what type of weights you have, whole numbers, rational numbers, fractions. Grand. So, 
I'd like to prove that. I'd like to follow Archimedes' ideas. I won't follow his approach exactly, but just use the, use the gist of his ideas to see if I can get my brain to make sense of why that is actually true. All right, back in a moment, have to clean the board. Archimedes was fully aware of and admired the work of the great Greek geometer Euclid. And what Euclid did was actually revolutionary. He took a system, the system of geometry, and said, okay, I'm going to approach geometry this way. I'm going to th think about some key self-evident truths, truths that seem so self-evident, we'll take them as given, and then just use pure logic, deductive reasoning, to deduce everything else about geometry from those basic principles. It was a revolutionary idea, and it was a very successful idea. And Archimedes was so impressed by it, he decided to do the same thing when thinking about the law of the lever. So he said, okay, what are some basic self-evident truths about levers? Things I can just say are so obviously seem so right to my experience with the levers, I'll take them as givens, and then what can we deduce logically from them? And he started listening to some postulates, things like this. Equal weights are balanced at their midpoint, and unequal weights don't. So what he's saying there is I've got a, a balanced beam with equal weights, one weight A and another weight A. It just seems obviously right to us about our experience with the levers that the balance point is at their midpoint. And if these aren't equal weights, that's not the balance point. That's what he's saying. Great. Possible number two is things like this. Um, if I add some mass to a weight, add some mass to that, that's going to cause imbalance. Things will tilt. In fact, tilt down to the lower weight, a heavier weight. Um, Proposition number three is the reverse of that. If I take some mass away from one side, that's also going to cause imbalance. It's going to tilt the other way this time. So they seem self-evident. And there's the fourth positive here is the one that has all the juice to it. And it basically says this. And it's actually, actually a very profound one, really. If I have a system of two weights, a weight A and a weight B, there's going to be some balance point for them. Well, okay, that's a system with two different weights. And he said, okay, I think that is physically behave, but we're going to behave physically the same as just having a single weight of the combined masses A plus B sitting right at the balance point. That a system of two weights is actually just behaving physically the same way as a system of one weight at that balance point for those weights combined. Wow. In fact, physicists do all this all the time. We'll do this all the time. You've got a system with lots of particles. If you think it's not just one block, of what that, that is one great big system, they say it may as well be a single mass right at the center of mass of all those points. Grand. So you're saying, all right, this is what, how I think uh, 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 balance behave, balances behave. Grand. That's going to actually get, get us to the law of the lever, and I'm ready to do it now as long as I clean the board. Back in a moment. Okay, so what I want to do now is actually prove the law of the lever. And I want to actually bounce off of Archimedes' postulates. But I actually want to bounce off something actually he deduced from his postulates that in his own right seems intuitively true and correct. It's this one. He said, imagine I had a beam and I put unit masses along my beam, equally spaced. So here's some equally spaced unit masses. One, two, three, I've got seven of them right now. If they're equally spaced, my brain says I know where the balance point is. It's going to be right at their midpoint, right there. And that actually does follow from the postulates. For example, these two masses behave as though they're a single mass of two right there. These two behave as though they're a single mass of two right there. These two behave as though they're a single mass of two right there. So the whole system is the same as a mass of seven right there, in which case the balance point is right there. Beautiful. In fact, the same idea works for an even number of masses along the line. I did an odd number seven before, but it has to say an even number four. Same idea. These two behave as a mass of two right there. These two behave as a mass of two right there. Horse system behaves as a mass of four right there, in which case the balance point is right there at the midpoint. Now, let me actually write down this idea in sort of modern algebraic terms, because I want to use modern algebra in my, in my thinking right now, just to encapsulate it. So the idea is if I imagine my beam has a whole bunch of unit masses along a number line, along, along the beam, but think of it as a number line. So this is actually a position A on the number line. This is position B on the number line. The positive says the balance point is going to be right at the midpoint, which in algebra terms is the average. The midpoint of A and B is A plus B over 2. So that's the principle I want to work with. I'm going to phrase it in terms of modern algebra, but I could just say it in words like Archimedes did, and there it is. Grand. All right, so let's go through the examples I did first on this video. And I think the very first one I did was a mass of 2 and a mass of 1 on, an, on a beam. Now, what I'm going to do is actually try to convert this system into one of those systems. How am I going to do that? Well, let me just be very clear that a mass of 2, I could at least think of that as a mass of 1 and a mass of 1 and get a system of unit masses. First of all, great. Um, what I could do is actually do the reverse of what I was arguing there. I could actually say, well, two masses here is really the same as two masses equally spaced about their position right yonder. So let me just draw this again. 
Uh, let me keep track of uh, where the positions are. So I'll draw a pink line to say this is where I am on the number line. I'm going to be drawing my picture several times maybe. But let me make my number line longer. So I could say, okay, don't do anything here. Keep your mass of one right there. But actually you can say this is equivalent to two masses either side of their original location. That's fine. If I can do it again, oh, if I'm really clever, keep the mass of one there and actually bring these apart further apart. So actually what I'm going to have here is three equally spaced unit masses. That's still a system of two right there. It's still the same as our original system of two. It's a system of one. But now I'm actually converted into a physically equivalent system. That's that, to which I know the answer. Bingo. That's where the balance point is. Now, where is that on the original beam? Where's that position that's just chopped the original beam? Where's that, where's that chopping point? Well, look at this. What do we got? These are equally spaced. So I've got half a unit of interval, half a unit of interval, half and half. So if I look at where I am on my original beam, I've got one section of length right there, and I've got two sections of length right there. Please place the fulcrum in a two to one ratio, a two to one ratio, which is what we said earlier on. There it is, following from this idea. Okay, I think the other example I did was a three and five mass. So let's do that one next. This is kind of fun. All right, so beam, a three mass, and a five mass. Um, I'm going to be redrawing the pictures to a physically equivalent one, so let me say, record those original locations. Uh, let's make my beam a little bit longer, so I can actually have room to play. And think of this as three unit masses, unit masses, and I can start teasing them about equally spaced about that center point. In fact, I'll keep one there, one there, one there. Five unit masses, one, 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 and space them around that original location. And if I'm clever enough, I can make them equally spaced, which gets them in this position. Grand, and then say, oh, I'm in this position. I know exactly where the balance point is. It's right, oh, there's a bit of a mess here, right there, right there between those two. So I'm not giving myself much room, but the question is, where is that position back to my original beam? Okay, so I'm right there. So I've got, okay, not, my picture's bad, but I've got half a length, 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 half a length. So I'm right there. One, two, three, four, five half lengths, five sections of length, one, two, three sections of the length, there's a 5 to 3 ratio, 5 to 3 ratio, there it is. It's falling into place. All right, so let's see if I can now do this abstractly with weights N and M. Oh, here comes some messy, messy picture, but I'm going to give it a go. All right, weight N, weight M. Uh, let's assume these are the original locations. Do, 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 do. So I'm going to redraw the picture a lot. Let's make the beam longer. And let's imagine there's a whole bunch of unit weights. N1s evenly positioned about there. M1s equally positioned about there. So I'm going to have a, a 1, 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 a 1. I'm going to have N of them. They should be equally spaced. Maybe I need another one to be equally spaced. Here I have a 1, 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 and a 1. There's going to be M of them equally spaced. Bingo. That's the picture I've got. And I know that this system balances at its midpoint. So where is that midpoint in the original picture? All right, so here goes, here goes. So let's get some algebra going so I can actually keep track of this. So let's do things as the number line. And let's call this first one at position one, position two, position three on the number line, all the way up to the nth one at position n. The nth, next one's gonna be n plus one, then n plus two, all the way up to n plus m, because there's m of them up next. All right, so I know where these are on the number line. I'll call them one, two, three, up to n plus m. In fact, in fact, ah, ha, ha doesn't look like my picture, but I know this pink line here is the midpoint, the original place, the midpoint of n and 1. So this location here, oops, is actually n plus 1 over 2, the average of 1 and n. This location here actually has to be the middle of n plus 1 and n plus m, the average of n plus m and n plus 1. So that's uh, 2n plus m plus 1 all over n, 2. It's actually n plus m plus 1 over 2. So I know that's the location. All right, so that's the original locations of those two points. And this result says, no, 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 I want the balance point to be at the middle of 1 and n plus m. So the actual balance point uh, is going to be here, which is the average of 1 and n plus m. n plus m plus 1 over 2. All right, so there it is. I know all the locations. The fulcrum is actually balancing, is going to be placed right there. What's the ratio of these two lengths? What's the ratio of these two lengths? I can figure it out. All right, so let's see. Let's see. I can actually work out the distance because I actually give myself actual numbers. Let's do the distances. 
This distance here is this number, take away that number. So the first distance is n plus n plus 1 over 2 minus n plus 1 over 2. You can give me this length. And this equals n over 2, n over 2, 1 over 2, 1 over 2. Cancels m over 2. So that is m over 2. Haha, -ha. what's this one? This is going to be n plus n plus 1 over 2 minus n plus n plus 1 over 2. Alright, so this distance here is this number, take away that number is uh, n plus 1 over 2, n plus 1 to cancel, I get n minus n over 2, n over 2. So this length here is n over 2 this way, and this one is m over 2. Oops, over 2. So what I've got here, yes. This fulcrum is at m sections, m halves. This one is at n halves, n sections of length this way. Bingo. You place the fulcrum at the ratio that's that, that the position that splits the length into an n to m ratio, n to m ratio, and you can even see the flip there. There is the law of the lever. Wow, just fell into place. Okay, so here's a claim that's often made in school book statistics. Collect some data. So here's some data. 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, and so on. And you usually visualize that data by drawing dots on a number line like this. So here's a nice visual representation of that data. People want to get a sense of what's the middle value of that data, so people actually compute the mean. And the mean is you add up all the data values you've got. 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4 da, 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 plus 6 plus 7. Divide by the number of data values you have. I believe it's 40 in this case. And you do all that work, and if I did it correctly, um, I think you get a mean of 4.5. So the average value of that data is 4.5. And then they say, here's a lovely physical interpretation of that mean. If you imagine that these dots are actually unit weights, literally sitting on a number line, then the whole balance point of the system is right at that mean, at 4.5. The mean is the balance point of that data physically, if these were like little unit weight marbles. Whoa! Is that obvious? Not to me! I don't know why that's true, unless I prove it. So let me see if I can prove it. So the result is definitely true for two data points. Let's just start with something simple. If I give a data point there and a data point there, so if that's at position A, that's position B, yes, we know that simple system bounces right at their midpoint, which is A plus B over 2. Check. All right, great. Um, suppose I now add a third data point to this. Let's build this up one data point at a time. And that's a little bit tricky, because I'm going to add the third data point now, maybe there at position C. So I'm going to, how am I going to balance that? How am I, how am I, actually, yeah, how am I going to literally balance that? Well, my brain says, okay, okay, let's do this. We know that this system of two data points in A and B is actually physically similar to a system of two data points there at A plus B over 2. So now the question is, from the law of the lever, where's the balance point of that system? A weight of 1 and a weight of 2. At one position here, one here, well, we know it's going to be a third of the way along. Law of the lever says, cut it into a 2 to 1 ratio. So the balance point is right there. So where is that balance point? It's going to be where I am, a plus b of 2, plus one third of what's left, c minus a plus b over 2. Okay, and you work that out, I've got a plus b over 2 minus a plus b over 6, that's a 2 6, that's one third of a plus b plus one third of c, is a plus b plus c over 3. It actually was the average of all three data points to begin with. Oh, I like this game. Let's do this again. Suppose I've got now three data points, uh, three data points, it might as well be a system of three sitting right at A plus B plus C over three. And let's add a fourth data point at some position D, one. What does the law of the lever say about where that balance point of that system is going to be? Well, it's going to be chop into four equal parts and come one fourth of the way in, three fourths the other way around. So where's this balance point? It's going to be where I am right now, I see over three, plus one fourth, oops, one fourth of that difference there, d minus a plus b plus c over 3. So now I've got a plus b over c minus 1 twelfth of a plus b over c. That's a, uh, uh, what is that? That's going to be, oh, 1 quarter of a plus b over c plus 1 quarter of d is a plus b plus c plus d over 4. And the pattern you're seeing, you can check, does persist that every single time the law of the lever says we're going to add an extra data point, I'm going to shift that balance point to the new mean, the new mean. So yes, the mean of a set of data is indeed the physical balance point according to the law of the lever, and it's actually beautiful. I really like that.